It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. With the Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome to Just the Bible Will Do podcast with Pastor Jonathan Smith. I want to take this very moment and say thank you so very much for listening to the podcast today. And I hope that something we say will be a help and a blessing to you as you go through your day. Let's get started today with a word of prayer. My dear gracious Father, Lord, thank you for another opportunity to come and gather around your word today. Lord, help us to learn something from your word. Lord, help us just not be hearers of your word, but God, let us be doers of your word today. Lord, we pray today for the lost. We pray that you will save them before it's eternally too late. For those that are sick and afflicted, Lord, we pray that you would touch them and help them and heal them if it be thy will. And all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. I apologize that I missed uploading a podcast last week. I was on vacation and um, so I do apologize for that. But I believe the last time that we left off, we left off in James chapter number four and verse number five. So today I want us to pick up in James chapter number four and verse number six. And over the last few weeks, we dealt with the Christian and his or her behavior. And this all started in James chapter number three. And we have dealt with several different aspects of sin. And how sin in the life can hurt a Christian and hurt our behavior and how to guard against those sins. We dealt with the sin in the mouth. We've dealt with the sin in the mind. And we have dealt with the wisdom and its source and where it comes from. And then we have dealt with wisdom's call. And we've dealt with how God gives us wisdom and its force. Then we dealt with sin in the members. And today... I want us to pick up uh, with sin in the members, and I want us to deal with uh, another great aspect of this, and I want us to deal with sin in the life resisted. Sin in the life resisted. Verse, I want us to look at James chapter number four, verse number six today, and we're going to go through verse number 10. I don't think that this podcast will take very long today. Um, I try not to give too much in one podcast Uh, James chapter number four, verse number six, the Bible says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Verse number seven, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When I think about this verse of scripture, there's so many different people today on when we when we talk about temptation, they always just say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. James gives us more information than that. One thing I try to tell my people at my church is let's get the context of the scripture before trying to tell someone the scripture. And tonight, when we think about that, if we don't understand the context of the scripture, you and I will fail to have the proper understanding of the scripture. So number one today, I see not only with sin in the life resisted, I see number one, the call to submit. And James gives us two areas today that we need to submit. Number one, he gives us the secret of spiritual virtue. Verse number six, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. 
You and I today must be humble before God. You and I today does not deserve the grace of God. We do not deserve the life that God has given us. When we think about this verse of scripture, the key word in this verse is grace. And that's the secret of a virtuous life. Grace, after all, is the unmerited favor of God toward man. It is getting something that we don't deserve. It is the driving force behind salvation, sanctification, and the security that God offers to every man. It is the key to the kingdom of heaven. It is the death blow to our pride because there's nothing that you and I can do to merit the grace of God. It annuls all of the world's religions which demand something that we do, something we earn, or something we merit. The proud man will not stoop down and accept the grace of God. So God will resist him. Today, men, the reason today, friend, that God has sent so many men to hell is not because God has rejected them, but it's because God, it's because man hath rejected God. When we think about this, we know that Cain tried to get his own way merited into the kingdom of God by bringing the own by bringing his own sacrifice and God said no Cain knew which was the right way and because of that added, or because of that Cain killed Abel because God accepted Abel's offering and not his. We know that it's great. It was all of grace for everyone in the Old Testament, everyone for the New Testament. It's all of grace for us. When I think about the grace that God gives us today, I can't help but think about the old hymn, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I get into verse number two. It says, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, tolls, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and it's grace that will lead me home. I thank God for his amazing grace. There's different types of grace that God gives to every man. I've, number one, he gives him a saving grace. Number two, he gives him a securing grace. Number three, he gives him a satisfying grace. Number four, he gives him an eternal supply of grace. Number five, he gives him the dying grace. The grace that when it's our time off this earth to live, then when it's our time to pass off of this earth, he gives us the grace that we know by faith we will see him. I thank God for his grace. Not only do we see the secret of spiritual virtue, second of all today, I see the secret of spiritual victory. Submit, verse number seven, submit therefore, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. As I said earlier, there are a lot of times preachers and other Christians will quote the second part of this verse, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But that is not true. Satan is not afraid of you and I. The Bible says he's seeking whom, he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's not going to flee from us. We can resist him as much as he likes, but when he puts his, forth his power, when he puts forth his temptations, when he puts forth everything in front of us, like Adam and Eve, they had the perfect garden. They had the perfect place to live. They had everything perfect in front of them. And all of a sudden, here comes in Satan. He says, partake of that tree. God's a liar. God's not going to do this. God's not going to do that. And and Satan deceived Adam and Eve. And Eve partook of that tree. And no doubt today, Eve said, Now, Satan, go away from me. I'm not going to listen to you. Satan wasn't one bit afraid of her. 
But now when we look on into the passage of Scripture and we get the right understanding, we must realize that by saying resist the devil and he will flee from you, that part of the Scripture is being taken out of context. What the Holy Spirit does says this, submit yourselves therefore to God. When you think about that, that is the secret of spiritual victory. Today, friend, you can resist the devil and say you're resisting the devil and resisting sin all you want to, but let me ask you this question today. Have you submitted yourself to God? Think about that. Have you submitted yourselves to God? When we submit ourselves unto God, that leaves the devil face to face, not with us, but with God. When we think about that today, we think about different men and different women who tried to overtake different people. Think about Saul, who later became Paul, tried to destroy all of Christianity. And what did all of the Christianity do? They stayed close to God, and God went after Saul and made him Paul. When we think about that today, are you submitted to God? I think about Job. <clears throat> Job sitting there in sackcloth and ashes. And Job is suffering. And Job is sitting there. And Job's friends come by and say, Job doesn't look too good. Job doesn't look like he's going to make it. Job doesn't know what's going on. Job's wife comes by and says, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Job looks back at her and says, you speak as a foolish woman. Why was that Job had submitted himself to God? There's several areas today that you and I, in order to live a spiritual life, are going to have to submit ourselves to God. Number one, you're going to have to submit to his plan of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Before a man or woman or boy or girl will ever get saved by the grace of God, they must submit themselves to the saving grace of God. After you submitted yourself to the saving grace of God, then you must submit yourself to the living grace of God. Preacher, what is the living grace of God? That's the grace that allows us to face every day, every circumstance, every trial, every storm, every tribulation. You and I must say, Lord, give me more grace. And the Bible says here in verse number six, he giveth more grace. So if you're submitted to the living will of God, he'll give you more grace grace. Lord, whatever happens in my life today, I will give you the praise, honor, and glory for. God, if it's good, I will praise you. God, if it's bad, I will praise you. God, if it's up on the mountain or down in the valley, I will praise you. Because God, I'm living. Because God, I am living in your will. Not only do I see the living in the grace of God today, not only must you be submitted in that, but you and I, thirdly today, must be submitted to the future of God. God, what is your plan for my life? God, wherever you lead, I will follow. Because God, the just, shall live by faith, not by sight. Lord, I don't want to live this life alone. But Lord, I want to stay close to you. That's why the psalmist David wrote in Psalm chapter number 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. When I think about the restoring of the soul, 
I think about how God will refresh us every day with new grace. And then today I think about when it comes our time to leave this earth and we're prepared to face God face to face. If we're submitted to him, we've been submitted to his will, we've been submitted to the saving plan, we've been submitted to everything. Then when we face him, our submission will turn to joy. Because today, friend, you and I are not living this life to please us, but we're leaving it to please God. My dear Grisha, Father, Lord, thank you for the great Bible study today. Help us today, Lord, to live a life that is submitted and pleasing to you. Lord, we pray that something that is said today has been a help and a blessing to someone. And all these things we ask in Christ's name, amen. Thank you so very much for listening to the podcast today. If you are listening to the podcast on YouTube, feel free to leave us a comment. Let us know that you've listened. If you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email me, pastorsmith387 at gmail.com. Thank you so much. God bless. Until we meet again, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon.